Hello, welcome uh, to no. my journey into Please. the media world. The game is thick and fast in the Premier League now, and next up for Aston Villa is Chelsea at Villa Park. And I'm here to bring you a match preview. I'm alongside Seb, a passionate Aston Villa fan. Mate, how are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm delighted that football is back. Let's get yeah. straight down to the business. Aston Villa versus Chelsea. The second game for, for Aston Villa will be the first for Chelsea. First of all, how tough, is, how tough of a game is this for Aston Villa? Oh, 100%. Yeah, I mean, we'll, be, we'll have to be at our best to get anything out of this game. You know, Chelsea are a good side, if not one of the best sides in England. And, you know, to get something out of the game will be very, very difficult. Yeah, and of course, this is Villa's second game in the Project Restart campaign. And Chelsea, this will be their first. Do you think that will have any impact at all? Potentially. Potentially it could. Potentially it couldn't. You know, we might just be grasping at thin straws here. But, um, <laughs> uh, you know, Chelsea could be rusty. They could have something to shake off. But who knows? We don't know least, until the game kicks off. Yeah, I suppose. And at, at the same time, you can look at it at another sense and, and think, depending on the team lineup that we field, some of those team, some of those players could be fatigued from the Sheffield United game. So it potentially, might... yeah. I mean, Chelsea are a very well drilled team, so they'll know what to expect. Yeah, definitely. And what have you made of Chelsea this season? Of course, um, they've, I'm sure they'll be very high in confidence. Of course, they've just signed Timo Werner, so I'm sure the dressing room and every every one around them will have a feel good factor about them. Yeah, I mean, he'll be a great signing for them. He'll be a confidence booster. And, you know, around 23, 24 years old, he's still tipped as this hot prospect. You know, he hasn't hit his peak yet. And I'm sure he'll be a great signing for them next season. Yeah, thank God he is not playing on Sunday because I'm sure he would cause our defence <laughs> a whole load of problems. And in terms of um, Villa then, uh, we mentioned a little bit about the game against Sheffield United. In that game, we played very well. And I think there's a lot to build on. If we can take the good parts of what happened in that Sheffield United game and cut out the tiny little bad mistakes that we made, like, for example, Courtney Horse passing it to one of their players and being a little bit more clinical um, in front of goal, then do you think we can, you know, hopefully get something out of this? How confident are you of Villa getting a result against Chelsea? And also, where does this rank in terms of importance? Well, I mean... Some are tipping it as a must-win game, you know, early on into this sort of mini tournament phase. And, you know, we're in the relegation zone and we're fighting for our lives, really. This is, this is a very important game, however tough it may be. You know, we'll have to be at our best to get something. We'll have to be well drilled, maybe get a bit of luck here and there, as you do against England's top sides. But you never know, we might catch Chelsea out on a bad day and spring a few surprises. Yeah, definitely. I think every single game now is a cup final. These last nine games that we've got remaining are all must-wins, like you say, and every single one of them is an opportunity to win. And no matter how hard they are, we have to go there with the belief and confidence that we can, you know, go and get something. One thing that I was really filled with confidence with from the Sheffield United game was how drilled and how good the defence looked. And of course, Chelsea will have some top quality players like Tammy Abraham. Tammy Abraham, a former Aston Villa man, and our defence will know a lot about him. So do you think we can play a part in hopefully silencing him and stopping hitting the back of the net? I mean, if we play as well as we did against Sheffield United, especially at the back, I think we're in with a good chance of, you know, keeping Cam Tammy Abraham to be quiet because... He's had a break, obviously, so he'll be back ready to go. Obviously, we know what he's like from him being on loan last season, but I don't see why we can't stop him if we are well drilled at the back on Sunday. Yeah, I, I definitely agree there, and I think we need to be more clinical. Um, whether Keenan Davis starts or Alisson Massa, I think it's a bit of a funny one with Keenan Davis because he's not a player that's going to score you 20 goals a season, but at the same time, his physicality is a real bonus and it allows other players to come into the game, doesn't it? Yeah, 100%. I mean, Keenan type of player for five, six, seven goals against. You know, Keenan Davis is the type of player to bring others into the game. He's the type of player to open his body up with his physicality, allow others to run beyond him. Whereas Ali Samat is more of a type to get his head on the ball, is a, more of a poacher in the box and to try and find the back of the net. 
Yeah, definitely. And in terms of the system that we played against Sheffield United, do you think we need to adapt that at, at all any, in any way? In terms of adapting, I, I don't think, you know, Smith like, like 3-3 three, three formation. He seems various ways and he changes here and there due to fatigue. I'm sure he'll make, as he's saying, he wants to keep the squad fluid. Yeah, I think I think Smith is, you know, he's very set in his ways in what he wants with Aston Villa, and he's, you know, he, he knows what he wants to do, doesn't he? Put it that way. Um, that moves us on nicely to the team news. Then, of course, it was a surprise to me that um, that some of the some of the players that was included in the first lineup. However, let's just go through each player and see if we agree on who should be in the team. So, in goal for me, no other than Oyan Nealand. Would you agree? Yeah, 100%. 100%. I can't see anyone else to fit that role. I mean, I've been a big uh, fan of Oyan Nealand since he signed in the Championship. You know, he certainly had his downs at Aston Villa, but I really think that if he can maintain that starting position in the Premier League for the last few games, he can push that role to make it his own. Yeah, and at left-back... Uh, would you agree, Matty Target? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think he's almost a nailed-on position in left-back. I can't really see Neil Taylor starting ahead no. of him and bar any catastrophe. No, Matty Target definitely, for me, and he's the better option of the two. Then at centre-back pairings, of course, Ming, Mings is a certain. And, of course, Engels is in, injured. I, I, I'm hearing rumours that he's out for around two weeks. So, on that basis... I think that I, I'm going to go a couple of changes. I don't think Courtney Horse. I've changed my opinion here, but I've, uh, I don't <laughs> think I don't think I think Courtney Horse had a had a had a semi decent game. Although the defence looked pretty assured, I did think he made that mistake um, with with passing the ball to Sheffield United. So I'm going to I'm going to go with Esri Conza at centre back. Um, I'm not sure if you agree. Yeah, I mean, me and you were talking before and I think we were under no illusions that Esri Konza is the better centre-back pairing alongside Tyrone Mings. I think he's more versatile than Courtney Hawes and I think he offers you more than Courtney Hawes does as well. Yeah, definitely. And a right back with Frederick Gilbert out injured, that leaves no other than Ahmed Al Mohamedi. Yes, I'm a big fan of Al Mohamedi. Uh, I've been a big fan of him since he signed. He's personally one of my favourite players and I think he's been one of the best players in recent years for Aston Villa Football Club so I think he's the one to start in that right back position That's an interesting opinion Seb and I think um, a lot of Villa fans wouldn't look at it that way so that's very interesting let us let us know in the comments down below what your thoughts on Ahmed al Mohamedi are Right let's move into uh, the midfield then Douglas Louise, um started against Sheffield United um, and I'm going to stick with that because I thought he did pretty decent and he worked well with McGinn. Yeah, he did. I thought the partnership they formed seemed to be really good. They seemed to have that understanding that maybe they didn't have before the break. Uh, I think the time away has offered them to, you know, gel as a partnership. And mm -hmm. yeah, Douglas looked really assertive against Sheffield United. Yeah, so you're going with Douglas Ruiz for the Charlotte game, yeah? I would put Douglas Ruiz in central midfield personally alongside... John McGinn, as I think Marvellous Nakamba is better suited to that sweeper role against Chelsea. Yeah. Chelsea are obviously going to attack us more than Sheffield United probably did. So I think if we add another central defensive midfielder in there, in the form of Marvellous Nakamba, I think that will help us tighten up at the back. OK, that's interesting. I'm going to stick with the CDM role for Douglas and then go uh, Connor Horahan and Super John McGinn. Who knows what fitness level Super John McGinn will be at. The game for Chelsea may come too soon and he might be too fatigued, but who knows. I um, mean, definitely was a, an asset against Sheffield United and he, it's just great to have him on the pitch. Yeah, 100%. I mean, I don't think anyone can underestimate the influence that John McGinn brings to the team when he's in that starting lineup. You know, mm. it, it allows the opposition to think about someone else other than Jack Grealish. So it allows Villa to be more creative and have more creative players on the ball to push us forward. Yeah, definitely. And then Connor, Connor's been in that at the team, but I just rate him as a central midfielder. Um, moving on to the attack, 
Um, I'm going to go with Jack Grealish on the left wing, of course, he's a certain, and I'm look, I was, he, he played fairly decent, I thought, um, he was unlucky, not score, hopefully he can get a goal against Chelsea, um, um, and then I'm going to go, this is where the changes come for me, they come in the attack, I'm going to go with Alisson Mata as a striker, I just think Keenan, Keenan played very well and he probably, in hindsight, deserves to start, but I just think against Chelsea, Alisson Mata will um, look to play in between the defence and hopefully he can get a, a goal or two if we are at our absolute best, like you say. And then for me, at right wing, I'm going to go with Trezeguet. Um, I was very disappointed with Amra Algarzi's performance. I just feel like Trezeguet deserves his chance as much as Algarzi does, if that makes sense. What are your thoughts, Seb? Yeah, I thought when Trezeguet made his brief cameo against Sheffield United, he certainly look to bring more energy and flair to the pitch that Anwar El Ghazi did. Mm-hmm. I was also with you in that and Anwar El Ghazi worry that fans were maybe expecting too much as it's now turned into his prime season where he's mm-hmm. where he tends to perform best. Yeah, um who knows what's happen- what's gonna happen with El Ghazi. I think he'll be very disappointed when he's not at his best too. So I I look forward to seeing what happens with Anwar and then for you who goes up top? I think, personally for me, I'm alongside you with Ali Samata. You know, Keenan Davis was brilliant last game and was unlucky to, to not get on the team sheet. But I think Ali Samata offers you that bit more experience that you need against the bigger teams. Whereas Keenan Davis is more of someone you can bring on in the last half an hour to switch it up. Yeah, um, totally uh, your opinion there and totally agree and um, very finally I just want to look at wrapping this up now the all important score prediction Seb what are you saying oh uh, I was on the up the villa podcast the other day and I that's gave that's a great a podcast by, there. Lee, by the way yes yes go subscribe like click notifications everything um, but I gave a prediction of a 2-0 loss on there so I I think morally I should probably stick to that. Obviously, I'd love to be proved wrong, but I I can't see us getting anything out of this game, unfortunately. That's fair enough. Um, For me, I'm a little bit more positive than you. Having seen seen Wednesday's performance, I think we'll take a lot from that and hopefully we can build on that. I'm going to be very optimistic. I'm going to be positive. I'm going to go with a 1-1 draw. Um, Scorers, I'm going to go with... Tammy Abraham going to score against us, unfortunately. Uh, hopefully, he won't celebrate. And then I'm going to go for a Villa goal, Trezeguet. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add, Seb, ahead of Chelsea? Um, not really. I think, you know, just that all the fans need to stick together. Obviously, stay away from the ground, you know, and cheer the team on from home, up the Villa. Yeah, totally. That's really important. Enjoy as much as you can from the armchair and support the videos wherever you can. But just please do not go to the ground. If you did enjoy the video, guys, please do leave a like, subscribe, and don't forget to follow Seb on Instagram. Links will be in the description. Um, Let us know your score predictions, Villa fans, down below. And how do you think we'll get on? Until next time, goodbye and up the Villa. Hit the subscribe button and follow my journey to the media world. Click the video choices on screen to see more of my work.